Good day to everyone. My name is K.S. Matthew, Professor in the Department of Computer Science, Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology, Kochi. Welcome to the course ESC 200, Design and Engineering, Module 2, Design Thinking, Part 2. In the previous uh, part, in the Design Thinking Module 2, Part 1, we were discussing on various tools and techniques for empathize phase of design thinking. And we have understood the requirements or the problems or the needs of the customers or users by empathizing with them. And we have used various tools in empathizing with the user and capturing the requirements. So now we have understood the requirements or problem to be solved clearly. So the next step is to analyze the requirement because of two reasons. Whenever you want to solve a problem, it is always better to identify the root cause of the problem and the solution has to address the root cause in order to solve the problem completely and correctly. If, you, uh, if, your, if your solution is going to address only the symptoms, the problem may not get resolved completely, it may come back after some time. So it is always better to address, find the root cause of the problem and then address the root cause for solving the problem. So analysis, the analyze phase is trying to identify the root cause of the problems we have identified during the empathize phase. There are two, three techniques for this. One is multi-Y or five Y's technique for identifying the root cause of a problem. It is very simple process, a simple activity, simple uh, tool. It is like repeating the question why multiple times. Why is just a number, good uh, rule of thumb. To peel away the layers of symptoms and go to the root cause of the problem. So you need to keep, keep on repeating why questions multiple times. Doesn't matter, uh, five or six or seven, doesn't matter. As long as you reach the root cause, you need to repeat this question in order to identify the root cause. So I'll explain this uh, tool with a simple example. Assume that one of my MTech students, Sam, was always coming late to my class. My class was in the morning uh, hour. So he used to come late every, 20 minutes late every day, most of the days. So he was a very good student actually and he had a good gate scores, gate score and I wanted to help him to solve this problem. So I crawled him one day to my cabin and asked, I had this um, a five wise uh, technique in my mind. So I started talking to him and I asked five, uh, asked five questions. So I asked, my first question was, why are you always coming late? So the answer from Sam, was, sorry sir, I, I really don't want to miss your classes, but I always miss college bus and then come by city bus and that's why I come late. So I asked the second why question, why do you miss college bus? So his answer was, I start late from home, I start late from home. Suppose I don't continue by asking uh, further questions. Immediately after getting the answer for the first question, I may conclude the reason that he is missing the college bus and coming by private bus. That's why he's coming late. So immediately, one solution will come to my mind, right? I'm, I'm aware of his background, his family background. His father is in Gulf, working in Dubai in a good uh, position. And they also have a shop in Anarlam city. So financially, the family is good, he is financially st uh, stable. So if I suppose I suggest a solution immediately after listening to this uh, answer from Sam, suppose I ask him, ask him, why don't you ask your father to buy a bike for you? so that you need not depend on college bus and you can come to the class on time, right? 
if I, if I suggest that solution. Do you think uh, this problem is going to solve? Problem may not get to solved if you try to suggest a solution at this stage unless you know what is the root cause of the problem. So you'll go on further asking questions and find root cause of the problem then come back and discuss why it may not solve the problem, the current solution may not solve the problem. So then I go on asking the third why question, why do you start the eight from how? So the answer was, I get up late in the morning. Fourth why question, why do you get up late in the morning? I sleep late in the night. So my last why question, why do you sleep late in the night? What could be the possible answers? Maybe is watching movies or doing, playing games, online games in the night, or chatting with friends, or reading something. There could be different uh, answers. But the answer I got from Sam was this. I help my mother at shop in the evening and we, we reach home late night. So that was the answer from Sam. So in that case, suppose I suggested the first solution that came to my mind. Buying a bike, ask, asking for a bike to his father. It may not solve the problem completely because now, now he is coming by college bus. The college bus reaches his stop at 7.30 in the morning. And college bus takes around 45 to 50 minutes to reach the college. Uh, by 8.20 it reaches the college. So he has to be there at 7.30 in the stop. Otherwise he will miss the bus. That's the current scenario, right? Now suppose he got a bike. He will be very happy to have the bike, definitely. So now after getting the bike, he will think, in bike, I will take only 15 minutes to reach home, I reach college. So I can sleep for 30 minutes, sleep for 30 minutes more. So I need to start only by 8 o'clock in the morning to reach uh, college uh, by bike. So I can sleep for 30 minutes more. That's what he may think, right? So if he starts in bike at 8, 8 o'clock instead of 7.30, the road will be full of uh, traffic. And he will be stuck in that traffic and he will still come late to the college. So in that case, if I ask him again, why are you coming late? He will say, the road is full of traffic, traffic. I am stuck in the traffic. That's why I am not able to come on time. Right. So it may not solve the problem completely, even if I, if I suggest that solution. How to address the solution has to the suggest, suggested solution has to address the root cause of the problem. Otherwise, the problem is not going to get resolved. You can, your solution can have, can address all of these causes, sub causes in addition to root cause. That's okay. If you can, your solution can address each of these causes. That will be much effective. That solution will be much effective. But unless it addresses the root cause, the problem will not get resolved completely. So that is a multi y technique of root cause analysis. The second tool used for root cause analysis is called cause and effect diagram to find the root cause of a problem. It is also known as fishbone diagram or Ishikawa diagram. I will explain this tool with a simple example. So it starts with doing a uh, brainstorming session and the facilitator will clarify is the problem to be analyzed root for root cause and you need to conduct a brainstorming session among the member team members to identify the causes or possible causes of the problem and once you get with possible causes from the members during brainstorming you need to categorize these problems into four M's man related causes, material related causes, machine related causes and method related causes. 
and draw the cost center effect diagram showing all these causes in different bones of a fish. So you will see an example. After brainstorming, you need to write all the causes, main causes as well as the sub causes in the bones, in the bones of the fish. So it looks, looks like a fish bone, that's why it is called fish bone diagram or shikama diagram. And once you document all the different main causes and the sub causes in this diagram, you will be able to identify where are the problems, uh, where are the causes concentrated on. That will help you to identify the root cause of the problem. So you'll see an example. This is a causal analysis done by automobile company. There was a complaint for one of the cars introduced by the company. The problem was high petrol consumption. So the company wanted to solve, identify the root cause of the problem so that they can resolve the problem. So they conducted a brainstorming session and during the brainstorming session, a lot of uh, ideas came, a lot of suggestions came or inputs came on what could be the possible cause of this problem. And all these causes were classified into six categories, procedure related, driver related. Ideal case, we say that it is four amps, but in actual scenario, you can have your own specific uh, main causes as, the, as well as the sub causes. Procedure related, which is M, method related. Driver related is uh, relevant, uh, is uh, can be related to men. Vehicle related causes can be related to the machine. Road related, maintenance related, and the material related causes. And for each of this main cause, there are sub uh, causes identified by the people that can also be documented as small bonds in, of the fish. So this is how a causal effect, causal analysis and has to be done and cause and effect diagram or the fish bone diagram has to be developed. So this is the second technique for identifying the root cause of the problem. Now in the analysis phase, in addition to identify the root cause of a problem, you should also analyze the conflicting requirements from the users or conflicting needs from the users. That is for that is called conflict of interest analysis. So it is also called as ENV method, element name value method. Let us look at how does this technique work. Consider the case of Sam, student Sam coming to my class late. So he was coming to class late because he sleeps late in the night. Time of Sam going to sleep is going to determine whether he'll be able to come to class on time. If he goes to sleep very late, very late, there are two consequences. So there are two scenarios, he goes to sleep late or he goes to sleep early. If he goes to sleep very late, goes to sleep la late, what is going to happen? Sam comes, to comes late to class and teacher is unhappy. If he's going to sleep late, Sam will come to class only late and teacher will be unhappy. And what is the positive consequence of that? Positive consequence is that Sam helps mother at shop and mother is happy. If he goes to sleep early, again there are two consequences. Sam comes to class on time and teacher is happy. And Problem is, he won't be able to help his mother if he comes early to home. Sam can't help mother and mother is unhappy. So, desirable, desirable consequence is these two. Desired result of your solution should be these two. Sam helps mother at shop and mother is happy. Sam comes to class on time and teacher is also happy. So whatever solution we are going to develop for solving this problem should have this desired result. Sam helps mother shop and mother is happy and Sam comes to class on time and teacher is also happy. Both are actually conflicting requirements as per the scenarios. So if the solution is going to address only one, one of them, Either teacher will not be happy or 
mother will not be happy so that is not a right solution you need to your solution should address this conflict and should make the teacher as well as the mother happy we talked about uh, we we discussed a story for a problem for uh, uh, describing a problem of porthos tailor porthos tailor so porthos tailor has to stitch a good fitting fashionable cloth for porthos at the same time he will not be able to use measuring tape to take the measurement because if he touch porthos the set will go whereas if he doesn't use the measuring tape measurements will be wrong and you will not be able to stitch a good fitting cloth again the porthos will be angry and the tailor's hat will go so these are the scenarios value is no use of measuring tape the consequence is that bad fitting clothes and often the hat but the positive is that positive consequence is that no touching and no touching whereas if he doesn't use a measuring tape if he use suppose he use measuring tape measurements will be perfect and he will be able to stitch a good fitting cloth but the problem is he will be touching porthos and he won't like that he will take this out and cut this head so the desired result of the solution we are going to provide for this problem is no touching but at the same measurement should be perfect no touching porthos and measurements are perfect this is the desired result from the solution we are going to suggest if the solution doesn't suggest doesn't address or meet any of this desired result the set will go your tailor's hat will go right so finally the solution suggested by the designer is this so the tailor asked porthos to stand in front of a mirror and he took the measurement from the image in the mirror and in that solution he doesn't touch porthos and he could get a correct get correct measurement from the mirror image and he could stitch a good fitting cloth so the third activity in inspiration phase is define define the problem and come up with a problem statement create an actionable problem statement which is commonly known as point of view in design thinking so point of view as following three statements following three elements who is having the problem user for example sam what is his need Uh, Sam wants to come to class on time. That is his need. What are the insight or why, so that he won't miss important lessons in the class. So the problem statement will look like this: Sam wants to come to class on time, so that he won't miss important lessons in the class. He won't miss important lessons in the class. In addition to the problem statement. we should also frame questions that are called as how might be questions hmw questions from the root cause from the causes you identified using the cause and causal analysis using multi y technique or ishikawa diagram your solution should address those causes then only the problem will get resolved so based on the causes of the problem you need to ask questions like how might we help sam to come to class on time how might we help sam to avoid missing college bus how might we help sam to get up early in the morning how might we help sam to reach back home early how might we help sam to support her mother in the shop so you need to frame this question so that it will be there in your mind when you are going to the next phase of ideation to find alternative solutions for the problem so whatever solutions you are going to suggest for the problem should address any of this 
should answer any of these questions, right? It could answer multiple questions or it, should, it could answer at least one question from the HMW questions. Generally, it will be the right solution for the problem. Data, you know, as I said, the data, TCS data group is also now focusing on innovation. Now, in order to develop an innovative culture, they have come up with some program called Tata Innovista and Tata Innovers. Tata Innovista and Tata Innovers are innovation challenge platforms, open innovation challenge platforms. And Innovista is only for Tata Group employees. It can be accessed only by Tata Group employees. And Tata Innovers is an open innovation challenge platform. It can be accessed by public. Data Group has a lot of companies. They work in all different domains. They have Data Steel. They have Data Consultancy Services. They have uh, uh, Data uh, the Mines, Collieries. They have uh, Data Motors. They have Data Watches, Titan. They have Data Diamonds, Tanishq, Data T. So they work in a lot of domains and they have factories uh, in all these domains and uh, manufacturing facilities in all these uh, domains. And all these companies face a lot of issues, challenges during their normal operational activity. And many problems are still unsolved and they are not able to solve these problems for quite some time. So data innovation challenge platforms Innovista and Innovers are used to publish, publish these problems faced by different companies of Tata Group so that employees or public can come up with solution for those problems, ideas and concepts for solving those problems. Probably first they will publish these problems in Tata Innovista to get ideas and solutions from their own employees. If there is no solution coming up from Tata employees, the problems will be posted in the Tata Innovers, which is open to public. And they offer a lot of high, very high rewards for each of these problems. Whoever suggests a solution for the problem will get huge rewards. So these are some of the challenges right now open in the Tata Innovers platform. Alternative use of used lubricant powder generated from wire drawing machines. It is open and closing date is 27th of October. Reward is rupees 5 lakhs. Avoidance of burning of rubber pads in wagons due to direct contact with hot steel coils. It is open and closing is on 23rd 9, 2020. Reward is rupees 8 lakhs. Prevention of dust at birth and stockyard from surrounding area. It's open and closing date is on 23rd September 2020. Reward is rupees 10 lakhs. Prevention of damage to LED lighting due to voltage surge. It is closed on 29th of July and uh, reward, uh, reward was given to the person who suggested solution. Eight, to eight lakhs rupees have been given, has been given to the proposer. Both all detection and mapping them on Google Maps. Rewarded rupees five lakhs and closed on 28th October 2019. Measurement of illumination level or lack in cities and mapping them onto Google Maps, Smart City enabled, which was closed on 28th of October 2019 and there was no solution suggested by anyone, but the reward was rupees 5 lakhs. It is closed right now and it is not reposted uh, as of now. There are other uh, challenges which is which are open, which are not open, which are closed from back in the previous seasons. And these are some of the good uh, creative problems to be solved. But these are not open at the moment. Now we, we go to the second stage of design thinking process, ideation. This is the phase where we generate ideas, alternate ideas for solving the problem and develop these ideas into concept, concepts. There are a lot of tools used in this uh, phase. These are some of the tools that can be used during the ideation stage. Brainstorming, brain writing of 635 method, scamper, substitute, combine, adapt, modify, put to another use, eliminate, rearrange. Morphological chart, 
random word technique, picture form technique, director and director, affinity mapping or KJ technique, mind mapping, dot voting, idea ranking method, six technique hats and quality function deployment. So we'll be discussing only the tools which are highlighted in bold because those are the popular tools and some of the tools we have already uh, seen in module one. So those tools like brainstorming and dot voting, idea ranking method, all these I will be skipping uh, morphological chart, all these we discussed in module one, which I will skip uh, during module two. I'm skipping brain writing. This is an improvement of brainstorming method. It is also called 635 method, meaning six bumpers, three ideas per bumper, and five iterations. This is how let six team members sit around a table. We always start with a brain warm up session, then let six members sit around a table and give a A4 size paper to each member. Let them write the name, write their name on top right corner of the paper. Everyone to write down or sketch three ideas. Then the process starts. Everyone has to write three ideas to solve the problem on the A4 size paper given to them. After writing three ideas by the team members, Members will pass their sheet to the person sitting on his or her left hand side. And the person sitting on the left hand side after getting the paper, he will read, go through the ideas written by the other person. And he or she will add or suggest few more ideas. He may suggest some ideas which are triggered based on the ideas already written by the other persons. Or they can also suggest new ideas and add three more ideas to the sheet. And then the sheet is passed again to the person on the left hand side. And he or she adds and few adds and suggests few more ideas. This will be repeated until the paper reaches the original team member who wrote the first three ideas. Right? So it will be five iterations. So I'm skipping this frame brain bam obsession. A brain gym. So you can give uh, this, we, we can take up these two problems as an exercise for doing the brain writing technique or 635 method as a group. Write down the ideas or solutions to detect the presence of letters or materials in your mailbox at the gate. Another problem to be solved is write down ideas or solution for cleaning ceiling fans. Morphological chart is another tool which is used in ideation phase. We have discussed this in module five, module one. I'm skipping the slide. So after we brainstorm and come up with load of ideas, suppose you get hundred ideas, hundreds of ideas. How do we choose? How do we decide which is the best idea? All ideas may not be good. So all ideas may we may not be able to implement because of uh, resource constraints. So we need to choose, select shortlist and choose the best ideas for implementation. So how do we go about shortlisting and selecting best ideas from a list of hundreds of ideas? The first step is shortlist this list of ideas from 100 to say 10 or 20, for example, right? A simple method to shortlist the ideas from a large set of ideas is called affinity mapping. So this is a simple method to group or classify ideas generated during the brainstorming based on some themes, based on some themes or criteria. So this is the first step for shortlisting the ideas for implementation once you get a large number of ideas from brainstorming. This technique is also called KJ technique named after the after the person who has introduced this technique Jiro Kawakida Kawa, Kawa it is also called KJ technique these are the steps to be followed 
explain the problem and conduct brainstorming to collect the ideas. Write the ideas on post-it slips, one idea per slip, and paste it on the board. Identify the category or classification or theme of the ideas generated by looking at the list of ideas posted on the board in post-it slip, random ideas generated during brainstorming. By looking at those ideas, you will be able to identify some category or classification or theme of these ideas generated. Then, after identifying the theme or classification, you need to group, you need to call some volunteers who will help you to group these ideas under these categories or classifications or themes and move the slips to the appropriate category or theme. So the board will look like this. So initially on the left hand side you will be pasting all random ideas here and after conducting the brainstorming you will be pasting all these random ideas here and after that you will call one or two, uh, two or three volunteers. You will also decide the category or theme for classifying these ideas. The category selected is motivations, way of learning, way of assessment and support tools. Those are the four categories or themes of ideas where we are going to classify these ideas under. And these volunteers will come and take a each slip and read the idea and they will decide which under which category this idea comes in and accordingly they will paste that slip under that category. So you will get the ideas sorted or categorized under specific themes. Suppose there are four themes, all these hundred ideas will be segregated or classified into four categories of four themes. Now it has become easy, right? It has not, I, I, you, you will still have 100 ideas. If it, it was originally 100 ideas, you still will have 100 ideas in the, on the right hand side. But you can further uh, uh, screen these ideas and shortlist them easily. So once you categorize these ideas, you you can even eliminate some of the categories because your company is not interested in working on those particular categories, for example. For example, there could be uh, categories which are uh, mechanical solutions, electronic and electrical solutions, software solutions and uh, traditional solutions. So the one company who is working in a software field may not be interested in taking up uh, solutions which are mechanical in nature. Or they may, be, uh, may not be interested to take up electronic solutions. They may not be interested in traditional solutions. They will be looking for only the solutions in software, using software where they are working. In, uh, uh, that's the domain they are working on. Similarly, a company, mechanical engineering company will not be interested in implementing solutions which are software or traditional ways of solving the problem, right? So they'll be interested in only the mechanical solutions. It is also possible that you can combine multiple categories. You can, you'll be focusing on one category, for example, mechanical solutions. Along with that, you can also implement some additional approaches plus the mechanical solutions or traditional approaches plus some software applications to solve the problem. So you can combine and eliminate some of the categories completely or combine some of the ideas together to come up with a new idea. All this can be done once you segregate the ideas into different categories using affinity mapping. Mind mapping is a simple tool again to present the ideas through a mind map or diagram in a structured way. And this is a mind map of uh, solutions suggested for solving a problem called detect golf poles. Golf pole is a small white pole and what happens is when the player hits that ball, it goes, uh, flies very fast and since it is very small and white in color, it is very difficult to uh, detect the presence of the ball and recover that ball uh, for reuse. So sometimes the balls will, balls will be lost and uh, they have to replace those balls in, for playing, right? So there are a lot of uh, solutions suggested for detecting and recovering the golf ball which is shown as a mind map. This is something similar to the affinity mapping only in the affinity mapping you will, you will see like a tree structure whereas here it is like a uh, mesh or star type. In the middle you have the problem and uh, the main category of ideas 
will be the first nodes then from that node you can have the first node will be the uh, the main solutions from that you can have sub solutions for each of this main category of ideas that's how the mind map uh, looks like mind map can be used for not only for uh, relating the problem illustrating the solutions for a problem it can be used for different purposes this is another website solution for a website so this shows what are the different pages or contents the website is going to have when it is completed which is shown as a mind map wedding you are planning planning for your daughter's wedding so and you have to plan for various activities and sub activities which can be represented as a mind map like this dot voting is another technique to shortlist the best ideas and we have discussed this in module 1 so i am skipping this. similarly idea ranking method also we have discussed in module 1 six thingy hats is a another novel technique introduced by dr edward de bono to solve problems choose the best alternative from a set of alternatives for decision making for making your meetings for effective for all this purpose six thingy hats can be used it is based on a concept called parallel thinking so in the traditional way of thinking what happens is when a particular person put forward an idea in a meeting for example the first thinking that comes in the minds of other people will be whether will that idea work right and then he will put forward a problem with that idea and the original proposer of the idea will tr definitely try to defend and there will be an argument in the meeting between people right so we waste a lot of time in arguing things because we think in opposite directions when one person sees all the positives of a idea all good points or benefit of an idea other person may be seeing only the disadvantages of the idea and they will be talking in two different directions which will create arguments and we will be wasting a lot of time in arguing things and we will not be able to arrive at a solution so in parallel thinking what happens is at any point in time everyone involved in the meeting process will be thinking in the same direction in the same direction since they are thinking all all are thinking in the same direction there will not be any disagreements there will not be any arguments so we will not waste time in arguing things because everyone is thinking in the same direction for example if everyone thinks in the things to identify the advantages of an idea so everyone will talk about positives or advantages so there will not be any arguments right similarly if everyone thinks on identifying the cons or the difficulties of the idea or challenges of the idea or problems with the idea everyone will be thinking in the same direction the negative direction still again there will not be any argument at all and six thing we had uses different color six color hats to represent the direction of thinking color of the hat represent the direction of thinking there are six color hats i will explain the purpose of each of the hats the white color hats white color of the white color represents the data and information white is the color of the paper white paper where we write a lot of information and data so white is white represents data and information so everyone whenever the people use white hat everyone will wear the same color hat at any point in time whenever the white hat is used all are supposed to provide only data and information nothing else during the time of using the white hat everyone is supposed to give information and data and another is yellow hat yellow is the color of the sun positive so yellow is for giving positive comments advantages benefit best case scenarios so when the people of uh, thinking group wears yellow color hats everyone is supposed to give positive comments positive points advantages best case scenarios good points 
right? So there will not be any argument. Next, another color hat is black hat. Black is sad, sadness, sorrow. So when people wear the black hat, they are supposed to give cons or negatives, disadvantages, warnings, errors, failures, all that can be given while wearing the black hat. So everyone while wearing the black hat will think on disadvantages, warnings, problems with the idea, all these will be put forward by the members involved in the thinking process. So we talked about white color, yellow and black. Another is red. Red stands for emotions and feelings. Red is the color of heart. So it stands for emotions and feelings. When people wear red color hat, they can raise any concerns, any feelings, the fear, anger, all these can be expressed while wearing the red color hat. Even if you, we work in a professional environment, in an industry, we are all individuals, persons, individuals, person, persons. So emotions, we have emotions and our emotions and feelings is going to influence our decision making, even in official setup. So red hat, Dr. Edward de Bono has introduced the red hat as a mechanism to funnel out all your feelings and emotions during a decision making process. So once you funnel out all your emotions and feelings while you wear the red hat, for rest of the uh, rest of the time when we use other hats, you can think independently without having any bias on your feelings or emotions which you have already expressed. Then you can think coolly and independently and come up with other points of positive, negative, pros and cons and all that, depending on the color of the hat you are going to wear. Next hat is uh, green hat. Green represents the color of vegetation, fertility, right? So green is for creative thinking and lateral thinking, during which you can come up with innovative, creative, wild and crazy ideas for solving the problems of society. You can also come up with an idea for solving the black hat problem while wearing the green hat. So green hat is always the creativity, lateral thinking, thinking outside the box. So thinking, uh, green color hat session can be used to express creative ideas. And the last hat is blue hat. Blue hat is normally used by the facilitator to organize the thinking session. So facilitator is the one who is going to coordinate this uh, thinking session. He is the one who is going to decide which are the color hats to be used in the session. Depending on the problem we are going to discuss or uh, solve, the color of the hats to be used will vary. So that will be decided by the facilitator. And the sequence of color to be, what the sequence of hats to be used, which color has to be used first, then next, that sequence of use also has to be decided by the facilitator. Also, the time allotted for each hat session should be fixed by the facilitator. All this he does while wearing the blue color hat. Other members can also wear the blue color hat if they think the meeting is not going in the right direction. It is deviating from the, uh, the procedure. Then anyone can wear the blue hat and redirect the attention or focus towards the normal, right? If the team is deviating from the normal process, anyone can put the black blue hat and redirect the focus back. So once you use this technique, you will be focusing on particular direction at any point in time, which will help you to come up with a lot of ideas or solution for or positives, pros and cons for a solution, which will help you to shortlist which is the best idea. Once you see the positives of all different ideas and the negatives of all different ideas, from that you will be able to determine 
which idea is having a lot of positives and with less negatives. That way you will be able to identify which is the best solution for the problem. So now you have identified what is the best solution for the problem. What are the best top solutions for the problem. Last stage is implementing that solution. Implementing that solution by making a prototype of the solution or proof of concept of your idea and go to the customer again and test that prototype with the users in the field to ensure that the solution works and it solves the problem. That is what is done in implementation. The two activities making developing the prototype and testing the prototype with the users to ensure that the solution works or the prototype works to solve the problem. There are a lot of tools used for prototyping. Depending on the domain of the problem, prototypes used will be different. In the case of the software, uh, in the case of software product, there are a lot of tools for prototyping the software. Software is nothing but a lot of screens and reports. So you'll be preparing uh, the wireframes or the designs of screens and reports using, we call it as wireframes or screen mockups. There are a lot of tools like Figma, Balsamic, Fluid UI, Adobe XD, Loomsy, GoMockingbird.com, Pencil, Drawio, etc. This can be used to mock up uh, the software screens and reports, which is normally the prototype in the case of a software product, which can be then shown to the user and they will be able to give feedback and comments on the prototype and that way you can further refine or fine tune the prototype. There are other uh, software in the software field, there are other design modeling tools like Unified Modeling Language Tools, Star UML, Rational Software Architect etc. also can be used to model your software by usage of UML diagrams. Then in case of mechanical, electrical or civil engineering products, you can definitely use the AutoCAD design software and 3D modeling softwares can be used to make a model, develop a model of your final product using AutoCAD or 3D models. Now they have, uh, now we have 3D printing technology. So you can even create a 3D model of your final product either in the full 100% uh, scale, either full scale or at a reduced scale, you can make the 3D model easily in few hours using the 3D printing. CNC machines, laser cutting machines, cast metal molds, injection molding, all these can be used for prototyping the mechanical products. Once you have the prototype ready, it has to be tested at the customer side to ensure that it works to solve the problem. So you can do a customer survey again uh, by giving you a product and comparing it and ask customer to compare it with existing products in the market and give a feedback. You can also do benchmarking to benchmark your product with other products in the market and see whether where your product stands and you can further improve that product once you get the feedback. Once you get a uh, understanding on where your product stands in comparison with uh, the competitor products. You will be able to take action to improve that product and reach to the top. And design of experiments, uh, we'll explain. Design of experiments is a technique which is used to uh, evaluate or validate your product with the customer in an iterative way and improve your product continuously till the customer is satisfied with your product. That is what is called design of experiment. You will be designing, you will be designing a lot of experiments to be done with the customer by varying and the specifications of your product and get feedback from the customer again and try to see whether the feedback is appropriate. If the feedback is not satisfied, satisfiable, then you will again mod make modification of your specification, make another set of prototype, go to the customer, get the feedback. This activity will be iterated. That is what is called design of experiments. So these are some of the picture, some of the examples of prototype in different domains. If you are uh, developing a watch or the smartphone, you can have a 3D model using paper, using paper, for example. 
uh, you can use cardboard paper plastic uh, metal sheets thermocol all lot, a lot of, all lot of materials can be used to prepare the 3d model either in full scale or in a reduced scale of your final product to make when the user see the prototype they will be able to give a lot of feedback which will help you to further fine tune your product this is these are another some other prototypes prototype could be even a diagram diagrammatic representation of your product storyboard all this can be used as a prototype um, only idea the main idea is to convey how the product is going to look like and work to the customers so customers should be able to visualize the product by looking at the prototype prototype whatever it is it could be a drawing it could be a 3d model it could be uh, the wireframes and the screenshots it could be a working model so by looking at the prototype the customer should be able to get a feel or visualize the product without any difficulty that is the basic purpose so that they will be able to give feedback on what do they like what do what they don't like and how can we improve that product that information inside you will get from the feedback given by the customers after using the prototype there is a prototype normally uh, wireframes for a software product so wireframes will look like this you can have the mock up of uh, various screens that will be there in the software which will help the users to look at the prototype and understand how the screens are going to look like how the software is going to look like they will get an idea that is a software prototype and design of experiments this is the last stage normally done in the product development so design of experiment is a method or technique used by the organizations to improve the quality of their existing or new products and services it was introduced by dr jenichi taguchi in 1924 It determines which combinations of design variables produce optimum result, performance, or quality. It determines which are the com which combination of input variables will will result in optimum performance of the product or optimum output. That is what is done by the design of experiments. We will keep on varying the input and measure the output performance. and decide which is the best combination of input which is the combination of input that will result in optimum quality performance or output the process design multiple experiments with different combination combinations of input or different variables and measure the output performance and that way we fix the input variable design variables and uh, that will be used as the best design variable for the perfect product so let me ask you a question how many of you like the coffee made by your mother and how many of you like the coffee made by your sister which one you like most coffee from your mother or coffee from your sister so definitely majority will like the coffee from your mother what could be the reason what could be the reason you may say their experience their experience uh, mother mother has been preparing coffee for 40 years 50 years right and my sister has been preparing coffee only for few years so it is the experience that matters probably yes but let me ask you a question what actually makes the coffee different coffee if you consider if you think about the coffee making process you have a lot of inputs to the process what are the inputs that goes to the process of coffee making sugar milk water coffee powder all these are the ingredients that makes up the water water milk sugar coffee powder right water milk sugar coffee powder so these are the ingredients that goes as input to the process of making coffee and output is coffee so the quality of the coffee and you have the process 
In the process, you have various tools and techniques like uh, stirrer, uh, the pan, stove, all these are tools and techniques which is common, which is not going to change. Whether your mother makes the coffee or sister makes the coffee, they are going to use the same tools and technique for preparing the coffee. Only, what is the variation? What could be the variation that results in different quality of coffee? Definitely, input are going to decide the quality of your coffee. The proportion of sugar you use, proportion of milk you use, proportion of water you use, proportion of uh, amount, the quantity of uh, coffee powder used, all these quantities of different ingredients used will be definitely different for mother's coffee as well as sister's coffee. So that's why the quality of coffee is different, right? So somebody said, uh, many of you might have said it is because of the experience of your mother, right? So I agree with that, I agree with that. So mother might have made a coffee 50 years before, immediately after her marriage on the first day morning. She prepared a coffee based on whatever knowledge she had at that point of time. She made the coffee and gave it to her husband in the morning. First coffee made by your mother for her husband. And after giving the coffee, she will ask him for the feedback. Do you like my coffee? So husband will give some feedback. He may say, yeah, it is good, but uh, it is very, very strong. You could have put little uh, more sugar as well as reduce uh, the coffee powder. It's too strong and too, too strong. So next day, she got that feedback. When she makes the coffee next day, she will keep the quantity of the water and the milk same and she will try to adjust the quantity of the coffee powder and the sugar based on the feedback given, right? So second day, she made some adjustments in the design variables or inputs and prepared the coffee and gave the coffee to her husband and again asked for the feedback. Today, she will, he will give some other feedback. He may say that uh, probably, yeah, uh, you can put, uh, you can reduce the sugar a little bit less. Now it is too sweet, sweet, too much of sugar. The strength of the coffee is okay. It's okay, uh, strength is okay, but uh, uh, too much sugar. So you can reduce the sugar. So third day, she will again adjust the quantity of the sugar. She will keep all the other things as exactly same as the previous day. And she will try to reduce the sugar. So she... She was doing experiment, right? She was experimenting with making coffee on day by day, right? Finally, when she gave the coffee on the fourth day to the husband and asked for the feedback, husband commented, this is the best coffee I ever had in my life. This is the best coffee I ever had in my life. So, she has decided to set that combination of ingredients used for that coffee as her brand of coffee. From there onwards, she used to make her brand of coffee using the exact combination of ingredients used for that coffee on the fourth day of, its, of her wedding. That is what is called the design of experiments. You keep on doing the experiments till you find the right combination of inputs which will give the best performance as output from the process. That will be decided as the specification of your product and you go for mass manufacture afterwards, right? All of you might have taken coffee from Indian coffee house. If you take coffee from Indian coffee house anywhere in the state, Kerala, or anywhere outside the state, there are coffee houses, Indian coffee houses outside the state also. So you take coffee from any Indian coffee house anywhere in India, you will taste, you will get the same coffee, same taste coffee. So they had done this design of experiments to decide what is the combination of ingredients to be used for their brand of coffee. And everywhere they are using the same 
design variables or in same input so that the performance is always same the quality is always same isa hat uses this technique whenever they are going to introduce a new flavor pizza whenever they want to introduce new flavor pizza what they do is based on the initial ingredients desired by the cook they will prepare personal pan pizzas of the new flavor pizza and they will give this personal pan pizzas for all the customers who buy a medium or large size pizza on a day or one or two days one or two days they will give a personal pan pizza of the new flavor to all the customers who buy a medium or large pizza of other flavors or they will give it for free for 100 customers right or two days or three days they will continue this so as soon as you finish your meal in the pizza hut you got the personal pan pizza free they will come back to you with a feedback form asking for you to give the feedback of the new personal pan pizza so we'll give there there will be lot of questions and check boxes and all that you need to give the feedback whether the questions will look like whether it is too hot which uh, topping do you like uh, do you like this uh, ingredient in the topping or not which ingredient you like most in the topping all that uh, questions will be asked in the feedback form and they will get the feedback from the various customers hundred customers who got that personal pan pizza for example they were suppose they were trying to give free for hundred customers after giving this personal pan pizza free for hundred customers they will get under feedback about this personal pan pizza they will analyze this feedback and make changes in the ingredients of this new personal new flavor pizza they will based on the feedback they will change make changes in the ingredients and make another set of 100 pizzas to be given free for the customers right so they will repeat this for maybe 5 uh, days 6 days 7 days or for 1000 customers so they will be repeating the same experiment again and again with revised ingredients or specifications in every instance of the experiment so this will this will be continued till they get a very high feedback for the new flavor pizza so at that point they will decide the specification or the right combination of inputs to be used for that person for the new flavor pizza that then that will be made as the ingredient for the new flavor and then they will go for the actual sales of that new flavor pizza from next day for example right so this process or this tool or approach is called design of experiments benchmarking is another tool to compare your product with other existing products in the market definition of benchmarking is very um, very interesting to read it is the practice of being humble enough to admit that someone else is better at something and being wise enough to learn how to match and even surpass their method so you need to realize that we are not the greatest there are other people who are better than us and try to learn from them and try to improve yourself so that you can reach their level or even you can surpass them that is the idea behind benchmarking these are the steps for product benchmarking form a list of design aspect of features which you want to benchmark form a list of competitive related product to which you are going to benchmark conduct an information search of the existing products in the market tear down the multiple products in the class you try to decompose the product so that you can uh, go to the details of each and every product and benchmark per feature you compare each of the feature um, broken down with your own your own feature or the component and try to compare the feature and the function and then rank uh, the rank the products according to there according to what you see when you compare establish best in class competitors by feature or function by ranking each of the product plot industry trends and plan or design redesign of your product once you uh, have an assessment or understanding on where your product stands in comparison to the competition competition 
you can take actions to improve your product and repeat this continuously and keep on improving your product that's the benchmarking is done so when you so when you are going to do some when you are going to purchase a product for example mobile phone i'm sure you will definitely do a research in the internet to compare uh, the product the phone you are going to buy with other existing top phones in the market and then based on the feedback you get or comparison chart you get from the website you may be choosing which phone to select for example right so this is the chart you may get after benchmarking from various uh, e-commerce sites so you can you can actually write what is the actual uh, what is the specific uh, specification of each of the phones in terms of processor ram memory os display camera price all that and so which will help you to compare the products right you can even use the stars you can instead of writing the actual specification you can also compare and rank them in terms of uh, ranking uh, when putting stars one star two star three star four star and five star etc that way you will be able to compare the features of various brand mobile phones and you can also give weightage for various uh, uh, components and depending on the weightage and the scoring for each uh, different models you can calculate a weighted score so from the weighted score you can identify which is the best phone and you can also identify the position of your phone in comparison with the competitor there is a tool software application or mobile app called andu2 which is normally used for comparing uh, benchmarking the android phones benchmarking the android phones it is a built in uh, mobile app android app which will help you to benchmark various android phones and you will get the output like this it is like uh, you need to plan which are the processes you are going to benchmark and what are the data to be collected in order to do the benchmarking that will be de decided in the planning stage you may not uh, benchmark all your processes you may be selecting some important processes to be benchmarked with other competitors for example then you will also decide for that critical process to be benchmarked what are the data to be collected and how are we going to collect the data that will be decided in the planning stage next is a research stage where you will identify you will identify some benchmarking partners with whom you are going to benchmark your process also you will collect data from your own process whatever critical process you have decided to benchmark in the planning stage and you have also decided the data to be collected now to collect the data using that you will be collecting data from your own critical processes in the research stage and also you will identify some uh, partners with whom you are going to benchmark your process you can identify the pa uh, partners benchmarking partners from the research you can do research web, res web search or you can get it from the trade via journals and magazines you will be able to identify or market uh, survey whoever is best in the market best player in the market you can identify and then they can be the benchmarking partners for you definitely they will be able to help you definitely if you want to collect the data from the benchmarking partners you need to give, get permission from them to go there and collect data from their process it is possible uh, to get the approval for collecting the data from other companies because of various reasons though they may not disclose the confidential information so this is mandated by some regulations and rules of the country for example every company will have this uh, every country will have some quality awards to be given to various industries so they may be giving quality awards to the best players in the market in various sectors right so one of the criteria one of the conditions to give the award could be to receive the award could be as a recipient of this award you are supposed to help other companies in the domain to improve also they may need not disclose all the confidential information but they are supposed to help others also to improve and grow because of those conditions others will be able to help you they will sign a contract with that company to collect data and study their process and third stage is you observe observe 
where you will go to the benchmarking partner and collect data from their own process, their process. You had already collected data from your own process in the research stage. In the observe stage, you will collect data from benchmarking partners. And in the fourth stage, you will do a gap analysis, analyze the data collected from your own process as well as from the competitive process and try to find the gap in the process by doing a gap analysis. And in the fifth stage, you will adapt or implement, take actions and implement the actions so as to bridge the gap between your process and the competitor's process. It is not enough. If you adapt and improve your process, your process may reach their level, right? But it is not enough. You need to continually keep on improving. If you stop doing anything after adapt, after some time, they will, the competitor will keep on improving further and after some time, your process will again go down. So you, after reaching their, own, their level, you, you need to keep on improving your own process so that you will be always on top. So this is thing. So these are the reference books I used for preparing the module two design thinking, Michael Lux design thinking and Kevin Otto, Christine, the product design and uh, product design and development by Carl Ulrich, mm -hmm. Stephen D. Eppinger. These are the three reference books used for big time. Thank you. Any questions? And if you have always